Hey guys, today is my monthly, well I try to do it monthly, history walk, kind of like a tour. Um, not so much, uh, too much graveyards, I figured I'd do the whole town since it's a small town. So it might be a long video. Um, there is cemetery uh, stuff at the end, we'll go through that later. But pretty much I'm going to Wailua and it's a small community in the north shore of Oahu. The town is totally radical from its neighbor Haleiwa, which is just bustling with different tourists and stuff. Wailua is a place that not many people will go to, including me. I've never really been through here. I've been to the beach a couple times uh, and passing through Dillingham Airfield on that side on Farrington Highway, but not really. It's a quiet town where time has stood still. And the town was once a sugar plantation where different plantation workers from around the world gathered and immigrated to Hawaii to work there and they came from all over the place china korea portugal japan filipino filipinos uh, puerto ricans to name a few came to work here and it became famous uh, as the sugar mill got bigger and bigger and you would probably know it as the cnh sugar company but um pretty much after 1996-ish the sugar plantation closed down and the town is just a pretty much a quiet little sleepy town. So I'm gonna take you through it and go through all the landmarks that I can find and come along with me and let's learn something new. So we're here at the T Otake store. It's one of the first stops off of Farrington Highway when you enter through Wailua on this side. And it is a super old store as you can see. And the sign says it's built in 1918. And inside is pretty old school as well. It's got some different fishing items, nets, bread and very few things but I stopped in for a drink and what I found interesting was these old candy jars where he still sells candy bars and such and I thought it was such a nice interesting old nostalgic thing. Hey guys so here I am at the Wailua District Park. Um, I went to the Wailua General Store. It's located in the only little strip mall in the little town and they specialize in different types of poke and Filipino desserts. I really wanted their Filipino mochi balls, but they didn't have any today. I guess they didn't make it. It's maybe too early, but I got their spicy poke, spicy ahi. It has a different name, I forget, but um, lots of different versions of poke. They even have Tahitian ceviche over there. So I got their little Poke bowl comes actually in a little plate lunch box. We'll take a taste of it. Mmm. Really delicious. Really, really good. I don't know if it's because I'm starving, because I haven't had anything to eat for breakfast, but it is pretty delicious. Really nice seasoning on this. It's not too spicy and not too mayo-y. It also has a little bit of a dark drizzle on here. I'm not sure what it is, soy, soy sauce or oyster sauce, but it gives it a good flavor. Definitely quite plain for those who don't want too many things on it. It doesn't have to, like tobiko or, I only see one green onion in here, so not too many things. Pretty plain and simple, but very tasty. They do give futakake on your rice, but I'm one of those rare, weird people that don't really care for it. So I just told her no futakake, but it does regularly come with futakake on your rice if you want. This is really good, really fresh, no funky fishy taste. The firmness of the fish is just right. 
what poke should taste like. It's not grizzly or tough, yet not too mushy. Fabulous. If you want some poke and you're in the area, definitely go to Wailua General Store. Totally underrated, in my opinion. I bet you, you probably didn't even hear about it. But it's got rave reviews on Yelp. And if you're wondering what this poke bowl costs, it is $7.95 for one choice. The price goes up when you start adding more choices of poke, but it is possible to do two choices, etc. What's nice about this little view here at this park is I am actually looking straight at the sugar mill. So it's really relaxing and it's a pretty cool view to eat my poke right here. So this is the old Bank of Hawaii. It's no longer used. It's all boarded up, but I like the architecture of it and it's still standing. I guess that used to be a sign, but it fell apart, this metal pole right here. But really interesting, it's right next to the Wailua General Store, if you're interested, near the library. So across the library right here is the old sugar mill. So I don't know if you can see the sign, but here is the old Wailua sugar mill. Now it's no longer in service, but it afar there. They have converted it into little stores. There's like a soap shop and some shave ice and a co-op farmer's market. So we'll go in there and check out what they have. So here is one of the old sugar mill stacks and that is the North Shore Soap Company. Here's a surf shop and the Wailua Coffee Company is over there. So this whole place used to be the sugar mill where they would produce the sugar. We'll go take a look in this soap store. So these are some gears that were used during the times of the plantation. I guess they saved them. They're amazingly huge. Wow. That's one of the stacks over here. It's a nice mural for the Wailua sugar mill. And these are the original buildings still standing. You see all this rusty tin roofs and that smokestack up there. It's surprising that it's still standing. And then all the other buildings back there that were part of the mill. And then this is the soap factory. You can actually walk up to it and touch this old piece of history. And this also has a tin roof, super old school. And I guess, I don't know what this is, like a vent where the air would come out when they made sugar. So we will go check out some soaps here at the North Shore Soap Factory and see what they got. So I had to overdub over this because they had copyrighted music and I don't want to get demonetized. So this is the inside of the soap factory. It's pretty much the original smokestack still intact. And they've got lots of art and different items displayed. So in the soap factory, there's some display items of like original hats and what the sugar mill used to look like and some various tools and memorabilia from the sugar mill. It's a faucet, some glass bottles here. It looks like um, cups, some wrenches, and a canteen looks like. Very, very old stuff. So this is our original tobacco box from the olden days, pretty neat. And some trophies from the 30s from a championship in Wailua. Got, looks like propane torches. I'm not sure what that is an old time stamp clock to check in to work, some old bottles and an old radio. That's a pretty cool old milk bottle. Not sure how old that is. And then here's some, looks like log books, another 
canteen type thing with some papers and some old rusty tools and items. A lantern. Really, really cool. There's also a display of some machinery used during the sugar plantation times. I'm not sure what these were used for. If anybody knows, you can leave it in the comments, but this one's cool because it's the original machinery and it has the Wailua Sugar Company stamp on it. So here's all the different soaps when you walk into the actual soap factory store and there's so many choices. I see lavender here and it looks and smells amazing. There's lip gloss, there's bath bombs, there's bath salts, all kinds of homemade soaps. And there's even lotions and even chocolate that they sell that's local. How long were you here for? I've been here for 12 years. Oh, 12 years. Wow. Awesome. And then you make all your own soaps, correct? We the soaps right here in this room. Okay. And that's, and this is the room. we have a soap right. maker. He's been here for 12 years as well. Uh-huh. Making all the soaps. So he makes all the soap related products and also bath bombs. And that's your Instagram, if mm -hmm. anybody's interested. And these are our essential um, oils with no color. So if you look up in our shadow boxes, this is all the soaps that we've made. This here is our fun, bright, jamming, it has fragrances and mica. So with all of them, we make here. Right there in the room, we use the drill press. It's all cold processed. We do use lye. Um, once it's saponified, it's the lye's all, all gone. Yeah, so one batch uh -huh. is 50 pounds. Wow. Makes 216 bars of soap. So our bars of soap sit and cure on a rack for seven weeks. Hmm. So we take them, slice them up into smaller portions, and then we will put them here on our um, soap cutter. So these are some of the soaps I got. I got lavender, this coconut soap, and asahi. Really interesting, and I'm excited to try them. So definitely check them out. So that's our little tour of the soap factory. That was really nice of her. That's Cindy explaining everything. So next we're going to go to the Wailua Hongguanji and check that out. So down the road from the sugar mill is the Hongguanji of Wailua and this is it. And if you don't know what a Hongguanji is, it's pretty much a Buddhist temple for the Japanese that came here. They brought these Hongguanji missions. And this is super, super old. I don't know what this is, like maybe like a little bird bath. But in here is a little Buddha in the rock. It's very interesting. Not sure what this is. It's like a shrine of some sort. And that's the sign for the Hongguanji. And as you can tell, by the sign it is super super old and what's nice is right behind the sign we're up a little higher you can see the sugar mill in the distance it's a really really pretty picture this old house you can see has the style of Japanese architecture with the roof that kind of curves towards the end and here is like a little sitting area made out of tin roof, probably from that era of the plantation days. Look at the rust on it. Very, very old and nostalgic. You would sit here, and I guess it is nice. It's nice and breezy right now. It cools you off, shades you. And this is the temple. And just the architecture, the shingles on the roof, the design at the top really really old I like the pillars and here's a little bit of I don't know if you can see them this camera doesn't really catch it because it's a wide angle but there are little finches up there in the rafters right next to this bell there they are all these finches they're flying away 
there's that bell. And facing the roadway is this big bell. And the handle to hit the bell also looks very, very old. I don't know if you can see because of the shadow, but the bell looks very old as well. And so does the structure. Very interesting. And across the street are these homes that still look very plantation era. That green paint and down here are more homes and different industrial businesses. Check out this old building. It's near the Wailua sugar mill camp right across the street. So I'm not sure if it played a role in the sugar mill. Probably did. It's got a bridge here. It's really windy. And I don't know what that instrument did, but it comes from this building and goes over there to some machine. Really interesting. It's really windy, but you can hear that tin piece in the abandoned building just rattle. It's kind of, kind of creepy, but a very interesting building. I wish I could go inside, but I really don't feel like dying today, so I'll just keep myself over here. So this is St. Michael's Church. This is the recent St. Michael's Church. In 1840, a small Catholic community had come to the small town of Wailua, and on May 8, 1853, the Wailua Catholic Mission built the first Roman Catholic church in the North Shore area. This was 160 years ago, over that much years, it's amazing, and they placed the new church and new parish under their patron saint, St. Michael the Archangel. Now the first church I'm going to try to take you to, I don't know, it was blocked off by a cattle gate, but it was built from stones from the surrounding fields and coral was gathered from the sea and pounded into lime to make cement to hold it together. And supposedly this church was the first Roman Catholic church built in Hawaii. And this was due to Catholics being banned at the time due to the Hawaiian monarchy only allowing Protestantism at the time due to the incoming missionaries. Now as the plantation workers started to live closer to the sugar mill, which is over here, it was harder to access the church because the church was built more towards Farrington Highway. So um, remember, you have to remember there were no cars or anything of luxury for transportation at the time. So the old church was abandoned and another church was built closer to town. And in 1923, a fire destroyed the church and another church was rebuilt. And Mr. William Goodale of the Wailua Agricultural Company offered to exchange the land for a piece that was closer to the plantation. When all was said and done, Mr. Goodale was going to demolish what remains of the abandoned church. And one night he had a dream. And in that dream, an angel came to him and told him to leave the church alone. This is the abandoned church that was not here. And he listened and it still stands today and it's a piece of rubble and hopefully I can find it. It's off the beaten path. And if that name sounds familiar to you, Mr. William Goodell, this behind me, right here, this road that you can see the cars going by is Goodale Avenue. And it was named after him. So this is where the original Wailua St. Michael's Church was, where that car is coming out, where the cattle gate is. And I wish I could go in there, but I'm not allowed to. I'm not going to trespass on private property. There is no other way to get into that road. That road is pretty much a farm now, but it did have the St. Michael's Old Cemetery. And I'll put a link in a description box below of a YouTuber that flew his drone over there. And I brought my drone thinking I could get some good shots of the church that fell apart uh, because you can't get into the brush, so you need a drone. Uh, but unfortunately, you can't do it. Totally ruined my plans, but go check out that video in my description box below to see what it really looked like.